Good morning all. This is the Freemo X700 portable power station. It's a 662 watt hour power bank with lithium iron phosphate cells. It has a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter with a peak power of 1200 watts. Now this is a pre-production unit. Um, it's also a 120 volt AC output unit. But I'll put it through its paces and see what I can get out of it. So let's have a little look at the front panel. Well up here we've got four USB type A's. Now you can pull three amps from these. You can pull three amps from a pair. There's a USB-C 20 watt. There's also a USB-C 100 watt. Here are the two AC outlets. And down here we have a 12 volt uh, cigar lighter or accessory socket. 10 amp output, that's 120 watts. Uh, this is a DC uh, 5521.5.2.1 uh, 12 volt output and that's 3 amps. And this is the charge uh, AC adapter or solar panel input. It can run up to 180 watts. On the rear of the unit there's actually a little flashlight. Now this flashlight can be taken out and carried around as a completely separate item but when it's in the unit you can use this button on the top to switch it on bright to switch it on dim and there's an SOS function on the top of the unit there is the display now this looks like a full color liquid crystal display it shows state of charge in big bold letters it also has a state of charge bar graph which pulsates strangely it looks like it's sound activated but i don't think it is it has a state of charge indicator for the portable flashlight it has bar graphs and these very tiny watt meters for input power and output power and there are four buttons here uh, power on off i will switch it off by pressing and holding that when you switch it on by pressing and holding the button it plays a little tune. You can switch the DC section on and off here, although the USB is on all the time. You can switch the AC section on and off here, and the flashlight you can switch on and off with this button. Accessories included are the power supply with its uh, US to Cloverleaf power lead. I've managed to find a, a UK to Cloverleaf to use instead of that, and the power supply is a multi voltage one there's also a 12 volt dc car to now this connector is not 7909 it's 7406 so 7.4 millimeters outer diameter and a 0.6 millimeter pin and of course it's the same as the connector on the power supply and the other accessory supplied this um, carry case actually it's more of a protective case to keep the uh, dust, I suppose, off the unit. So the power supply is this one. It's uh, 100 to 240 volts on the input. The output is 24 volts, 7.5 amps. That's 180 watts. And interestingly, this is the first piece of equipment I've seen with the new UK CA approval marking specifically for the UK. Also supplied by Freemo are these two things. This is the Hyper 100 folding solar panel and this is the portable power station insulated carrying bag which can also double up as a cooler bag. So this is the insulated carrying bag, uh, fully lined and insulated. Use it to carry the portable power station and then use it to keep your drinks cool. This is the Hyper 100 folding solar panel let's get it out of its box and set up it looks like this little blue LED on the box on the back and there are three cables there's the cable ending in a 7406 connector there's also a female version of that for paralleling two of these solar panels together and there is a USB type A output and here are the technical specifications for the solar panel. Full sun solar test with the Hyper 100 
and the Fremo X700. And the input watt meter is saying 63 watts. Test of the Hyper 100 solar panel on the Fremo X700 under a large cloud. And the watt meter spends a lot of time on zero watts. And then it goes up 4, 8, 10, and then drops back to zero. But when it drops to zero, it spends a lot of time on zero. 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, and back to zero. Now that's going to mean very long charge times under cloud. One thing to note is that when the unit is powered on, the display is always on, it never times out. And in addition to that, the USB section is always on as well. Test on one of the USB type A's. We've got five volts on the output. Let's turn up the current. Three amps, which is the maximum I can pull. The wattage on here is saying 15 watts. On the unit here, we're saying 17 watts, but it holds a reasonable 4.95 volts. Then with this uh, two amp unit to the side of it, so that's a total of five amps. We've got a reading of 28 watts on the output power level, and it can handle those two side by side. But if I put one above the other, the bottom unit's taking two amps. The top unit, the voltage is falling away at 1.2. It's dropped to four volts. Now some USB-C tests. I'm using the RAV Power power bank, which will pull 30 watts on its USB-C input. So let's plug that into the 20 watt output of the X700. Nine volts, 2.2 amps. Now it's saying on the Rui Deng, just under 20 watts. This is actually uh, reading uh, 28 watts, sorry. So there's a bit of an overhead um, in the USB-C circuitry. If I now plug it into the 100 watt output, the Rui Deng says 20 volts. This will pull 20 volts at 1.5 amps. That's 30.8 watts. And we've got 32 watts on the output power meter on the X700. Let's see what voltages are available on the USB Type-C. I'll put my PD trigger on here. This is on the 20 watt socket. We've got five volts, nine volts, and back to five volts. So there are only two voltages available on the 20 watt socket. Let's go to the 100 watt socket. Five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts. So I can get all five uh, USB-C voltages from the 100 watt output. Now let's do a test on the 100 watt USB-C output. Now I believe this Nimaso cable is only rated for 60 watts. So I'm not gonna go up to the full 100 watts. I'll need to switch this up to uh, 20 volts to get the maximum power. That's that's 12, 15. So 20 volts coming out of the USB-C output. Let's start turning up some current. And as I say, go to about 60 watts. So that's 26 on there, 42, 44. Now let's just take it a little bit higher. Watching this watt meter here. Oh, 60 watts. So certainly it's happy with 60 watts, 66 watts indicated on the X700, uh, 57 watts indicated there. So that's 20 volts, three amps, so that's 60 watts. I don't take this cable, uh, this Nimaso cable any higher. So now testing the 12 volt output, which I believe runs up to three amps. Let's find out, I'll need to switch on the DC output section so that's dc on We've got 11.7 .7 volts on there just over two amps on the 12 volt output uh, we're seeing 18 no 24 watts here and 25 watts indicated on the x700 let's add a little bit of course and we've got an error message here dc output overload i didn't quite see what current that happened at 2.6 amps 2.8 amps. 
Well, it cuts out a little bit low. It was 2.88 amps, so it cuts out a little under 3 amps. Now, if I press this button, that seems to restore it. 2.88 amps, and there it goes again. So it's not quite 3 amps on that output. Now let's check the cigarette lighter output. So that's got an output of 12 volts. Let's take that up to around 10 amps. 10.1 uh, amps, 11.3 volts. Now we're seeing 129 watts there. We're seeing 116 watts there. It's certainly holding 10 amps, although the voltage has dropped a fair bit. Take it up any higher than 10.2 and this thing uh, overloads, which you'd expect. Charging test using the supplied AC adapter. And this is reading 175 watts. Now let's check pass-through mode. So I'll switch on the AC output. Uh, these light bulbs come on. They're quite dim because they're 240 volt light bulbs. I'll look at getting some 110 volt light bulbs. But we've now got 175 watts on the input and 55 watts on the output. So that's pass-through mode confirmed. Let's do an inverter output test. So I'll switch on the AC and the output is about 115 volts AC. Confirmation that this is a pure sine wave output. There's the sine wave. We've got 115 volts or thereabouts and 0.06 kilohertz, which is 60 hertz. And just a confirmation of the output frequency, that's 60.3 hertz, according to this MUS tool. Right, I've just charged the X700 to 100%, but it's still pulling 173 watts. So there may be some meter calibration and or cell balancing going on at this point. So I will wait uh, until the power meter drops down to zero watts. 100% on the state of charge indicator, no watts coming in. So let's disconnect the AC power adapter. Now this is the only measuring device I could find that does uh, 100 to 240 volts. All the others are 240 volt only. So I'll use this one. The only thing is this one doesn't have a memory. So I will have to watch the full discharge and uh, make a mental note of the total kilowatt hours from the display there. So let's start the full discharge test. I'm going to use an ant miner because the power supply for it is fine across a range of voltages. Now I'm doing this at below its maximum power rating of 600 watts uh, because at 600 watts the battery tends to overheat. I'll insert some clips showing the problems I was having. This is pulling 664 watts, so I'm overdriving this unit by uh, a good 10%. And there's some very warm air coming out of here, so I think by running it a bit above its nominal maximum of 600 watts, uh, we're losing some energy there. Just after that, at about 47%, it's actually said fan blockage. It was getting very warm, so I think running it at 660 watts is a bit high. I'll retweak the miner, charge this back up, and uh, repeat the test. Now my crypto miner down there is pulling 540 watts, 509. So we got 509. Oh, that's interesting. So we've got 509 watt hours, we got down to 3% and now we've got fan blockage, which to my mind says the fans are running full throttle, but I can't keep the unit cool enough. Probably not the electronics because I think the fans are here at the top. It's probably the battery pack itself that's got warm. Turn on the AC outlet. The discharge test has started, so it looks like it's drawing at the moment 425 watts. That'll probably go up a bit as the load warms up. Now down to 50% on the state of charge indicator. 
uh, we've been running for 40 minutes the cryptocurrency miner is still pulling 440 watts and we've done 275 uh, watt hours in terms of total energy from that 50% of the battery pack so doubling 275 is uh, 550 I believe 550 watt hours now in the manual we have a notional cell capacity of 662 watt hours so if we knock off 10% for inefficiency of the inverter to AC we get about 600 watt hours so we're a little bit short at the moment I'll come back when we're near 0% and we'll see what the total energy recorded is now down to 20% or 19% on here and a little red low battery indicator has appeared let's just look at the stats here 442 watt hours uh, just over an hour and it's still pulling 440 watts and for the remaining 10 percent of the energy in the power bank i'll leave the camera running so that i can catch the eventual watt hour result on the watt meter 500 watt hours clocked up down to 8% state of charge 3% 522 523 and it shut off at 523 watt hours the display was saying 3% but then I briefly saw it say 0% and it's gone off I'm just going to turn the power back on. I don't want the AC to come on particularly. Yeah, so now it's saying 0%. So that's it, 523 watt hours. It's a little bit uh, below the 600 watt hours expected given these numbers. To sum up my thoughts on the Fremo X700, it's a very convenient uh, form factor. I really like the always on display i like the always on usb um the 100 watt solar panel i only saw 64 watts i think it was in full sun and there's a bit of an issue with the mppt in uh, cloudy skies when there's only about 10 watts available it tends to hunt it tends to cycle and spends a lot of time at zero watts so it's a very slow charge if you don't have full sun a full discharge from 100 watts to 0 watts at 600 watts is not possible. It wasn't even possible at 540 watts. I had to drop it to under 500 watts to do the full discharge. Now I think the problem is the battery getting warm and I think the solution to that might be to put some ventilation holes in the bottom so as well as the fan drawing air from right to left across the electronics it also draws air up from the bottom through the cells and that would keep the cells cool -er. I do think it's the cells that are the problem they get hot the total battery capacity during the discharge test was a little bit lower than expected but it's nice to see a unit with uh, lithium ion phosphate cells so those are my thoughts on the Fremo X700 portable power station Cheerio!